I'm Eve. I'm Anthony. And this is With Love and Rage from Extinction Rebellion, New York City. We're a new podcast Mm -hmm. from Extinction Rebellion. And Anthony, tell us what Extinction Rebellion is. Extinction Rebellion is an international movement that uses nonviolent civil disobedience to compel governments to take action on the climate and ecological emergency. It started in the UK last year. It started here in New York in January of last year, so almost a year ago. And it's modeled mainly on the civil rights movement in the United United States and the Indian independence movement led by Gandhi. So nonviolence and deliberate law-breaking civil disobedience are the, that's a fundamental part of the strategy. Yeah, and I think Extinction Rebellion has become known where it is known for this idea of the civil disobedience. But it's also, I kind of like to tell people that roadblocks and arrests are only half the story. The other half of the story is the regenerative culture that we're really putting forward. And this has to do with um, the idea that we're visioning a world that's possible. So we have our four demands, which we'll be covering in upcoming podcasts. And then we also have 10 principles by which we work. And this is the part where we're bringing in the regenerative culture. Extinction Rebellion is, in a way, fundamentally different from traditional activist movements in that it aims to be open really consciously to everybody, even people who haven't been involved in activism before. Something that's appealing about Extinction Rebellion is that it's grounded in this strategy that has a historical precedent of really making a difference and of pressuring the people who have the power to make the decisions that need to be made to make those decisions. I'm thinking an example of what I'm talking about is the gun stuff. Children are being slaughtered in school, literally, and millions of people went out and marched about it and nothing happened. And and it just doesn't, it's because political leaders and the financial elites who guide so much of their policy don't respond to appeals to reason and morality. They just don't. And what they do respond to is disruption to the political and economic systems that generate their wealth and power. And that's what blocking a road or something like it does, is it temporarily impedes the profit-making of financial elites and it threatens the credibility of political leaders. It makes them look like maybe they don't deserve to be in charge. You have to do those things if you want, you know, if you want them to pay attention to you and to listen to you. Yeah, it's sort of interesting that you're coming at it from a really philosophical, historical perspective, because for me, Extinction Rebellion was my rebellion because it was colorful and so, sort of silly and loving. You know, in the UK, they blocked five bridges and they had a skate ramp and they had a faith bridge and they had a garden bridge and you know, I've been working on climate issues with frontline communities for 12 years. And last year, all of the news was so devastating, just day after day. And I was feeling it was just so urgent. And I saw the UK rebellion. And I thought, and that's my rebellion. It's beautiful. It's open. It's everybody's involved. Um, There's kids out there singing. If I'm going to rebel, it's also got to be fun. And it's got to be open, like you said, open to everyone. You know, we stand on the shoulders of amazing activism that's happened over the years. And we've learned, we're hopefully learning from that. But we're also saying, this is a whole different thing. It's an experiment. And let's try different things. And let's bring different people in. And let's do things differently. While we're looking very squarely at the target of the government and the pillars of power that uphold the government. And it also feels like if we're dealing with something that's so complex and potentially traumatic as the climate and ecological emergency, we better have fun fighting the systems that have put that in place. You know, we've been, it's, it's really hard to deal with on an emotional level. And, and that's part of this, you know, I mentioned the regenerative culture. Part of that is grappling with the emotions of the climate and ecological breakdown. And I should say, oh, Anthony and I are always good about catching this, that it's not just a climate movement. It is actually climate and ecological breakdown. The climate is only the the fourth sort of highest ranking cause of extinction that there are. It's actually the ecological devastation that's been wrought upon this planet that we need to be focusing on as well. So we want to make sure that it's not responded to with just green technology responses. We really invite and welcome everybody 
into Extinction Rebellion because we do need everybody. And what we're, you know, what we're trying to mitigate against is going to affect everybody. Um, there's nobody who's going to be completely insulated from the effects of climate and ecological breakdown. It's important to understand that it isn't just extreme weather that's going to ruin people's lives. It's political instability and violence. Because when you have major crop failure and food insecurity and hundreds of millions of new refugees over the course of just a few decades, which is what the UN is projecting, that's a breeding ground for authoritarian, oppressive, violent governments. And of course, the first people to be exploited and abused by those governments will be the people who are already exploited and abused, minority groups, mainly people of color and poor people. So those social justice issues are interwoven with climate and ecological breakdown, and they'll affect everybody. You know, there's a great there's a great graffiti that's gone around in Extinction Rebellion that action is the antidote to despair. Yeah, the worst is to not do is to feel totally powerless and to not do anything, and being able to put your energy somewhere that is at least doing something, even if you don't know ultimately that it's going to work, it just makes it more livable. You know, you can live with it a little easier. We hope this podcast appeals to people who are already in the movement, but also to those who have no idea who Extinction Rebellion is. And we're going to talk to people who are a part of the movement, people who are on the side of the movement, people who are who we're looking to from within the movement and we're learning from. We're hoping to explore all the demands and principles with a lot of different voices and through different lenses and perspectives. We hope to talk to some of the XR youth and XR University, as well as people doing media analysis with climate scientists and just bring all those voices in to help us share out what Extinction Rebellion is about. I'm just super excited about having a podcast. <laughs> this podcast has been a production of Extinction Rebellion New York City. We have no advertisers. We are volunteers fueled by love and rage. If you would like more information about Extinction Rebellion, please go to xrebellion.nyc. That website address is in the show notes for this episode. Thanks for listening, and see you in the streets.